Alrighty, everybody. So we are on that overtime grind. It is the Euro. I've had my day off of the stream. I have been wanting to make this video for a couple of days now, actually like a, for a week because of uh, all my thoughts I have towards UFL. If you guys don't know what UFL is, I mean, I'd be shocked. But if you haven't heard about it, it's the new free-to-play football game that is in development by Strikers Inc. And uh, is also a... Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo invested game. He invested $40 million into it. And there's a lot of other investors. And there's a lot of promise because it is free to play. And they have also labeled themselves in many ways as someone that's going to come into the football gaming scene and make some noise. So a lot of people have been asking me for my organized thoughts into one video. And I'll tell you the, the greater part about all this, as much as I love all of you asking me for my thoughts, UFL have been Discord adding me every day almost every day, not every day, that would be a lie, almost every day, a lot of days, that they want my feedback, they want me to make a video, they want to hear about it, and you know what, right away, I thank them all for that, uh, they also had server outages during this open beta, and they gave people like free coins, I know it's a beta that goes away, but UFL is definitely going the right path and trying to go the right path with communication, so I want to say shout out to UFL, uh, you know, guys, I got no payment with them to do any promo for the game. I was just excited that there's a new football game coming out. They gave me the access a day early, which is a payment within itself. Because a lot more people watch my content to see it early. Um, so thank you to them for that. That was very appreciated. And uh, yeah, it's very refreshing to see that they care. Uh, and I think they do want to make a good football game. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. Obviously, UFL wants to make a boatload of money and have a successful product. Who doesn't want to? Who, who doesn't want to have a successful business, right? So... Good start from them. We're going to be talking about a lot of things today in this video, a couple different things. Um, and uh, yeah, is UFL really going to be that that FC killer? Is it going to be the, the FIFA killer? I think I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a long time before we ever see EA be the number two. I'm going to put it that way. I think EA just have such a monopoly on what they're doing. And, and EA have the greatest menu content. The way they have that game surviving on that right now, it's, it's beyond commendable. But there there is a high volume group of people that are really just tired, man. Um, and 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 for me, it, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. I think FC24 is the worst lowest skill gap simulator I've ever played in a football simulator. I mean, it, is, it has the most effective defensive AI. It has the most broken defensive AI, attacking AI. EA, don't patch anything. I think I think it, when all is said and done, we, we've really seen EA's cards this year with how many store packs they've done, uh, with the way they have treated us as a community with gameplay patches. They... They, I think they've peaked, um, and I think they're starting to go in that downwards direction, and it's it's a great time to see games like UFL, 2K, we have goals being made, I'm sure there's going to be other games getting into it, uh, getting into the community, this is, uh, you know, football is the greatest sport in the world, and uh, there's a very passionate gaming community that goes with it as well, and uh, there's a lot missing from the current community, so we're going to be talking about UFL, I'm going to kind of talk about it super objectively because they want some feedback, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on it. Uh, just so you guys know, as a, I guess, precursor, I played about like 50 or 60 games, probably 60 games uh, in two days. So I played it a ton. I thought they were owed that. And uh, I want to say a huge, like commendable statement to UFL. I, I appreciate you guys having the balls to go out there and drop an open beta because I thought a lot of people just thought they were expected and given this type of opportunity. And they let everybody go out there and try it over the weekend, and you know they they know it's not a finished product, and and they've been really vocal about that the whole time that they they know there's going to be glitches, they know all of this. The the point of an open beta, this is the first open beta I've seen a football game do. We EA used to do demos for the new game that was like head to head offline, and according to them, in some of these previous statements, were versions of the game that were six months old. So this was their most updated version. They were releasing it for everyone to try out. Um, and, um, yeah, appreciate them for that because you know, at the end of the day, they are going to improve their game by sharing their game with the community to give, um, feedback to. So here we are giving feedback and here we are four minutes into the video waffling. So let's point out a couple of the things real quick, just to kind of balance some positives, some negatives overall, is this game ready to be released? No, it is not ready to be released in my opinion for the purpose that I think they can make the game a lot better. The funniest part is, with the three versions that I played, this game, sorry, with the three games out right now, with EFO Ball, uh, FC24, and this game, this game has the highest skill gap, probably by 10 times over compared to the other two. That's crazy to say, and I mean it. I absolutely mean it. I played about 25 games. 
Uh, I think I was on. I think that was on Sunday. And let me put it to you this way. And I'm, we're gonna have some gameplay playing in the background. I just want to say this was pretty cool too. Total installs I had over one mil on the first day, which was crazy. Sixty thousand people online, so a lot of interest. But the way that they had released their one game mode was that it was a ranked mode. So basically, you were playing very high record, high level players. I think on this version, I got two versions because I played one day early and then I played on Sunday. I think on this version, I finished with 20 wins, two draws, and four losses. That's pretty good. And I and I and I and at the end of the session, I said, I looked at it and I said, one of the wins I don't think I deserved, one of the draws I don't think I deserved, and two of the losses I thought were iffy. One of them definitely iffy, the other's not. We were playing people that were 33 wins, 10 draws, and four losses. Now, some of you may have seen this gameplay. I'm not here to commentate over it. It's just going to be in the background so you guys see it. I'm going to be more talking about what my experience was in this game, talking about some of the positives, talking about some of the negatives. Uh, first of all, the way they've done the system with the skins, it's incredible because it gives them an opportunity to monetize and at the same time as us as the user. It's not too pay to win in my opinion. It could go pay to win, which I hope it doesn't. I hope they don't put crazy stuff on it, but they did have a cool system with that. I liked it. The drop rate on the skins was really nice. Uh, basically, you had to get the skin and then you had to buy the player with the currency which was earned via in-game. It's no, it's no pay to win. You can't buy it with like loading up points. So I really like that. The skin's basically what they did, if anybody's wondering. They gave you some more experience uh, for your player. Basically, the, they have a system in this game, which I think is absolutely incredible. I don't have it in the background for you guys. If you didn't play this game, the, every player has XP. So every player individually levels up. Imagine like a season, but it's for that player. And I think all the players had ranging between three and five, six levels. Essentially, you could choose between like 20 to 26 traits per player. And basically, one of the traits was like curler. You give them added cur curve. It was on finesse shots, five plus five. One of them was like strength plus five. So that makes sense for a defender. Dude, this system was awesome. The higher rated players like Messi, Ronaldo, it was way harder to level them up. Took way more games. The lower rated players was way easier. I love this. I think that was one of the coolest things ever. And uh, the skins were cool too because they gave you two more uh, some of them gave you more XP. Some of them gave you more reputation, which is their system of you earn these via rivals wins, which is their ranked mode, or I guess it's ranked. I love it. I think it was cool too. And, and the reason why I'm feeling very optimistic about UFL long-term is this, and this is what I want to point out. The one mode that they had released was the rank mode. The fact that they played 25 matches in this ranked mode, players that are 33 and four, and I felt like two or three of the results didn't go the right way out of 25 is outstanding for an open beta with the state they are at now a lot of the game needs work and we're going to talk about that in this video but here is the bottom line that i think we don't need to do as a community we don't need to overcomplicate things at the end of the day yes there was a lot in this game that needs work desperately let's put it how it is right a lot of this game didn't feel good but at the end of the day the concept of the game was to go to goal and the game was fun man the game was just end-to-end -end football, even at this level. And, and for me, in my opinion, you have to go in the highest division to figure out if a game is good or not. Look, I'm not labeling this game good, but I'm labeling the concept of this game, the way they are going for it, the direction I think they're trying to go in is a positive one. The fact that I had this much fun playing at the sweatiest level of this game says something. Now, to the counters that are going to respond saying, it's because people haven't figured out the meta. Oh, I figured out the meta. And everyone else knows the meta in this game. The meta in this game was the finesse shots. But outside of that, I loved how a lot of this game felt like about making the right pass. You had to make the right decision. In FC24, you can brainlessly hold your sprint button and run up the pitch. So the first thing I want to talk about in this game is the sprint button. You can use it. You shouldn't use it a lot. With the version they released, if you use the sprint button, it kind of kills you. You have to time it with a defender. Whereas in FC, you literally can just run up the pitch with one player from the back and just left stick people with holding R1 and you run around like you got to stick up your ass. It's the dumbest situation they have on that game. It's just so dumb. So the way they have it in this game is that a lot of it is about making the right reads, the right 1v1 skill, and the right pass, which I personally liked. I was, I was getting so tired of brainlessly people holding their sprint button now on the other side of it ufl i think you guys need to make the sprint a little more effective they essentially released a version that honestly i love because i think it really emulated high skill 
But the problem with this version, you can't release this version for everyone because people are not going to want to play it if they can't sprint. And 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 to be honest, even in my opinion, I would probably want like 10%, 15% more uh, sprint effectiveness. I'm not saying they have to outrun the players, but the problem was when you sprinted in this game, the animation with the dribbling was like really weird. And I think everyone who's watched this video who played UFL will also agree with that. Um, but again, the concept of the game was great. The, just go to goal. And that's what it should be all about. If you go look at FC24, and I'm going to use FC as the main comparison because I just don't feel like eFootball is at the same level of popularity as FC. The elite division is full of meta tactic abuse and defending and aerial plus crossing on corners. It's disgusting. And that's how you look at the game and you know it's a terrible game. If you also just watch anyone play FC24, you can tell by the defensive AI it's a garbage game. This is probably actually the first year of FC FIFA in the franchise that genuinely, once you get past a... Let's say you play a player that's like a five-win positive player. So maybe let's say in the weekend league, a uh, 13 and eight player, or sorry, 13 and seven or 12 and seven. You can't tell the difference, in my opinion, too much between a rank one player and a rank four, rank five player because of the disgustingness of the defensive AI in the game, especially now in the summer because every card is like 98 with five play styles. So the game literally just plays for you. It is the most AI infested game I have watched. So, the first thing I want to talk about, even though I've already talked about 10 first things in this video, so this is going to be the, the let's say, the 10th, the 11th thing I want to talk about. The, the system that they have for the defensive AI is the best I have seen in any football game ev ever. I can't even speak right now because I'm tired from the week. It's the best I've ever seen. The, the system they have with defensive AI, it's amazing. That is actually the best part of this game in the open beta. In my opinion, the defensive AI was extremely manual and you have to make the right reads. It takes skill to defend again. It was so refreshing. It's not even defend again because I've not even seen this level of defensive requirement in FC and eFootball definitely doesn't have it either. eFootball has a horrendous AI system defensively where when you actually are, are open and away with an attacker, every defender in that game catches you too. So FC and, 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 uh, and, um, uh, eFootball have the worst catch-up system. There's there's no such thing anymore as a breakaway. It's brutal. I, I hate it because there's no skill to it. You can never bypass the back line in a breakaway situation, so you have to break them down in the half court, which sucks. Okay, here's where it gets even better, and I'm going to say this, and I mean this, and this is a huge statement to be saying, guys, about a game that was in an open beta state. In this open beta state, UFL, the best part of this game, the absolute utmost greatest part of this game was the tackling. In my opinion, the tackling was like an 85% success rate. Uh, it was so re refreshing to make the right read manually. And I literally won the ball. It, like, guys, I can't believe it. When I'm playing this game, they have added animations, basically, for when you tackle. Did you just see that right there? And that was even a jammy one, and I still won it. The amount of times I'm passionately speaking about this because I was so happy playing a game where I made a manual read and I actually won the ball. Look, he won the ball. It's amazing. It's amazing. And guys, the even better part about what they have done in this game, oh my God, the interceptions with the defensive midfielders, the interceptions with the center backs, the interceptions with the attackers. By the way, the way the attackers defend in this game, it's horrendous. Look, I couldn't even win the ball there with my attacker. They're so bad at defending. Whereas in FIFA, we have Mbappe tackling everybody. Okay? And, and honestly, the most refreshing part too, they actually... Need to work on it a little, but they have a system where when you select the midfielder yourself and you make the right read, a lot of the time you get the ball. I, I know, it's crazy. It's crazy to have to sit here and say this, but it was amazing. Whereas at times, if they if the opponent played a ball by your player that you weren't selecting your AI, and literally it could be like within two feet of the player, even the defender that's got good stats, they wouldn't win the ball. The ball would just go through them. How refreshing, man. I mean, it was just so refreshing. So... To the devs at UFL, I, I really hope you guys don't. I really hope you guys don't change much with it. I I I loved the state of the tackling, the defensive format, how it was. Make people learn how to defend again. Force people to improve at the game. People come in my chat and in, in stream and videos all the time, and they say, "How do I improve at this game? How do I get better?" And I tell them, honestly, I I don't really know. Like it's a lot about luck. It's a lot about meta abuse on FC now. It's not a lot about learning football. It's not a lot about how to make the right reads and get better at defending and tackling. I mean, this was obviously an unfortunate situation, right? That one was, you know, like, you're going to have your plays like that. That was gross, and that's not helping my case. But I would say for the most part, 
when I was playing, I was having one of these goals every five games. And let's not let's not kid ourselves. It's an open beta. So it felt it felt great for that. They could still improve on it. Those are some of the positives. Obviously, there's a lot of negatives, but we're gonna deliver them with constructive feedback. And also it's an open beta. So the point of this was that we were to play it and we were to, as our job, give them feedback. Okay. Something I really like about this game. It's free to play. All right. There's no, there's no entry barrier to playing this game. Anyone can play this game. If they set up the servers across the world, uh, everyone can play, everyone can download it. I really like that. I think that's important. I think gaming just needs to get to that point. And I think it's going to actually potentially long-term somewhat in the next few years make ea have to change something at least make it cheaper i mean with all these games coming out 2k definitely won't be free but if one of these free games hits and does really well i mean it's gonna force it right it's gonna force it so i think it's the right direction even like x defiant which is a game that i'm gonna compare a lot today recently it's a uh it's a it's a game made by the x cod pros with ubisoft like the route they went with it being free to play and it's a good game and then you want to spend money on it that's a much better route than getting that upfront money i think kurt uh, who is a creator and a, a game developer too. He even said that like, and it's it's true what he said. Like the fact of the matter is if you're releasing a game for money, yeah, it's obviously a business situation. But I think when you release a game that's free, you know it's going to be good. Uh, that's just my take. Um, let's talk about graphics real quick. I think the graphics are good enough. I, I like the graphics a lot. I have no problem with the graphics. I thought the player faces look great. I thought the stadiums they had looked great. I, I thought it was great. I was not really too mad that they didn't have the team licenses because at the end of the day, they had all the player licenses. And you know what? That's all I care about. Okay. What did I write down? So for me, this game already as is was probably better than eFootball, uh, if I'm going to be real. And I and I look, I like eFootball. I think eFootball is actually a better game than, than FC24. The problem with eFootball is that the feeling of playing it, yes, you get the football fix. They haven't updated their graphics in like 20 years. Um, their UI on the menus is absolutely atrocious. And they just... Efootball, the, the 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 thing that sucks about them is they actually do have some things in that game that are good. If we can move past the defensive AI, that's absolutely crazy there too. They just don't add modes, man, that are good. Like they just made a Euros update and they added three AI co-op modes and AI modes. I'm like, dude, people don't want to play squad battles. All right. So a, a, a huge problem is with this game too is I have heard through the grapevine that UFL is going to be putting a huge emphasis on co-op, ranked co-op modes to earn Look, the fact that EA haven't done that in the last few years, even with how bad their game is, they have missed out on such a opportunity with that game and to grow the game. Instead, they've killed it, in my opinion, with just these store packs and not improving anything else. So UFL has a great opportunity uh, to really enhance the football gaming community um, outside of uh, just pro clubs, man, and, and get us involved playing for a reason with our friends. Um, so yeah, I thought the attacking AI was decent in this game. Uh, I think it could be improved a little bit. I did think it was good enough, though. I felt like when I was making the right decisions at the right times uh, that I was able to really get the goal. Um, I felt like the fluidity overall of the game was not very good. Uh, I felt like a lot of the times I was having to spam, you'll see in this gameplay, the first time shot fakes to get open. Um, I thought just generally the fluidity, I feel like, yes, it felt very arcadey, which I don't have a problem with, but the problem with the arcadiness was that I felt like no realism, and I didn't really feel like a lot of the animations were great. And I know that's ironic because I complain about EA adding 10,000 animations, and I don't think it has to be that way. I think they just have to add some that make sense and, and get that feeling. Like, the finesse shots didn't really feel great. Nothing special about the low drivens. Nothing special about the cross goal shots. Um, everything felt a little bit not fluid. So I don't know if, as a as a creator how to tell the game designer how to make something not fluid but or or more fluid but just a sense of a little bit more fluidity it felt a little bit like i was loading up the N nintendo ds and uh just playing on something a little bit older even though the graphics are good the ui the menus all they have going on here it's amazing i love it it was so clean but that part that that fluidity for me was missing on this game so that was a that was something that i i want them to improve on um, the overall feeling of just Feeling a little bit better on this game. Let's just put it that way. I don't know how else to put that. Um, it felt a little too like FIFA FC at times. I know that's ironic because I just said the defending was like nothing like FC. But at times, I felt like some of the attacking plays, at times, we saw that kind of like ice skating where you go down the line and pass the ball. And then the two attackers would just keep running straight past the ball. And it would be dispossessed where I'd like to see them improve the attacking AI in that sense where we could start to see some of the attackers uh, make either like diagonal runs 
Uh, you know, if, if you're running down the line a little bit and then you pass it, they actually check back for the ball. That, they have to work on the coding. You guys can see as well, the, the, the way they've done the skins. I mean, even just getting Foden and Araujo there. And they're, uh, not only are they beautiful looking cards, but they give you a little experience in how packable they are. Then you have to go on the market and buy the players. I earn this currency via playing and uh, getting the wins in the ranked mode. Uh, which, by the way, guys, the fact that they, again, I'm going to reiterate, they released the ranked mode. I liked the game. I thought it was fun in the ranked mode. I got pretty high up, too. I was playing people with 33 and 4 records. Is a really good sign about the game. You think about that they're probably going to have one mode with no SBMM, open matchmaking, uh, a real friendly EA could never, but at least something with a purpose. They'll probably have other modes. I'm assuming every of these new games is going to be probably every one of these new games can be going for some sort of weekend league, some sort of co-op weekend league. I mean, the potential with this game, with all those, oh my goodness, bro. Oh my goodness. Even if they released this open beta with all those modes, yeah, it was terrible in ways. It would be so fun. I mean... The bottom I want to reiterate to you guys that I'm very optimistic about the future of UFL is the game is fun, man. That's, at the end of the day, we got to stop overcomplicating too much, man. If the game is fun, the game is fun. This game was fun. There was parts of it that were trash. The game was fun. The style of play was fun. Okay, let's keep talking about it. Guys, honestly, I'll be real. The finishing in this game was terrible. Now, I like that the finishing was a little more manual. The only consistent shot in this game was the finesse shot. The finishing overall was really poor. So to the UFL devs, I need you guys to get back to work. There were so many cross goal angle shots where I'm like, let's say between a 6 and an 18 cross goal. The ball's either going to the keeper or the ball's going wide. We got to make those consistent. If you guys want to look at something to, that will really help you, because I'm sure the devs are watching this video. They've asked for my feedback. Go look at the FIFA 23 finishing. The FIFA 23 finishing was outstanding. Outstanding. Look at the cross goal shots in that game. That's what we want to see. EA got rid of that this year. I have no idea why. But that's just a little bit of advice that I could give you an actual detail to go look at to hopefully uh, introduce into this game. Um, that's probably what I would say. And I would say this to the UFL devs. Look, I think one part of the finishing out of the finesses that were really good was that you can go up to the keeper, ball roll the keeper, and it works. Keep that. Don't get rid of that. Do not get rid of that because that's very important. We lost that consistency with this year's game. It works sometimes. It doesn't work. Good finishing is important. The defensive setup you guys have put into your game, don't make keepers super overpowered. I thought they were a little too good in this beta. Maybe a little bit lower. You want to go all in with that style of manualness. Forcing people to play well, not getting bailed out by their goalkeepers. Um, look, a huge positive with this game was that you go so quick from the front to the back. That style of being able to just fly forward, bro, with the football. I miss it. Um... Finishing was terrible outside of finesse. That's what I wrote down. Felt a little too arcadey with the players. Need a little bit more ping with the players. A little bit more, like, emphasis. But not in a bad way. Not the bad way. We don't like it in FIFA where it gets laggy. Just a little bit more into the, maybe the the, the speed of it. The, 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 the touch of it. I don't know necessarily. Um, look, I, I think overall, the importance of having to make the right decisions on this game was in the right way. I don't. I didn't say that well. Just the importance of having to make the right decisions. Like I, I liked that if you made the wrong read, you kind of just lost the ball. That was really refreshing. We played this game FC, and we've like told ourselves in the brain it's okay that the guy makes seven wrong decisions, he still has the ball. That's not okay. Okay, it's not okay. So that importance, I really like. I like the idea of passing your way forward with a mix of dribbling too. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I think overall, my 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 largest change for these guys is is three three right here, right? The first one is that I want to see finishing be way better. Um, the second one is the overall fluidity feeling and like finishing better. I want to see more valid opportunities than just the finesse shots. The finesse shot system, I don't look, here's my take on the finesse shots. I don't actually think, I think they're maybe 5% too overpowered in this game at the, at the current stage, but you can see everybody's just doing finesses because it's actually the only way we can get consistent shooting. Here's, here's my take on the finesses. Look, that finesse I just conceded, it was deserved because I didn't I didn't defend it well. You can defend the finesses easily in this game. You can. It's a consistent finish, but you can defend them. It's not like they're in that FIFA 19 undefendable first-time shot strikes. Like, you can make the right read. Right there, I tried to get a finesse shot. He made the right read. So it shouldn't be all about the finesse shot. If you make the other finishes better, it will be better. Okay. There was, like, a glitch with the over-the-top balls. So I noticed that as well. Like, some of the lock-on... In this game, was this is my last point that I think that they really need to work on, and I'm trying to give them things that they can actually work on. I'm not going to give them something that's like some crazy ask and it might not happen. 
the overall lock-ons in this game were really poor. I felt like at times when I was trying to pass the ball certain ways, it just really wasn't locking on, especially on crosses. I thought crosses, it was brutal. Um, not to mention that some people were starting to do these like lob through balls that were locking on really, uh, really weird. By the way, they have keeper movement. He moved his keeper there, so you can all stop the finesse shots with keeper movement. Or as the attacking player, you can make the right read and go near post. I don't love keeper movement, but it is in this game. I get it. Um, but yes, th there was a bit of a glitch with these, uh, with these like lock ons. So they need to look into that. And what I'm talking about is that when you have the defensive center back and the other person is attacking, if they threw a lob through a ball from their midfielder or attacker, sometimes the defender was just locking off weird and they were having a wide open breakaway. So they need to look into that. They need to just look into the general fluidity of the lock ons with the passes. I thought at times it was really weird. Um, it's just my take. I thought it was weird. Um, what else did I write down here? I think overall, yeah, that fluidity feeling, but I'll say this, guys, and, and here's my advice for X, X to find UFL going forward. I think UFL should should take a lot of the feedback that we're talking about as a community. I've seen it everywhere on Twitter. Inception made a really good video about it. I'm making a video now of my honest thoughts. The direction of this game, it's promising. It's free to play. Uh, they have the the mentality on... It's just fun, fast-paced fast -paced gameplay. It feels a little bit more arcadey, but it's got the right mindset, man. It's just fun to play. Right, I think they should do another open beta. This game is too far away with the fluidity, the glitchiness, the lockoffs, the finishing, um, the list that I've just mentioned. Right? Yes, there was actually a lot of goods with this game that they shouldn't change, but there's a lot of bad too that they're gonna have to make these things better because it's just gonna make the general experience of the game better. I look at X Define as a really good example. Last summer they released their first open beta. People were like, "Yo, damn, this is pretty fun." Right? So that's the feeling. I'm that's the comparison I'm getting here. I was like, "Yo, damn, this is pretty fun." All right. And look, I think the views really reflect it, guys. The UFL video that I did, I know this is another football game coming out, but look, if people didn't take it seriously, people wouldn't have watched the video, right? That video has over 500,000 views on my channel in like a week and a half. People are getting really excited about this game. There's a lot to like about it. Obviously, there's a lot of curiosity and interest about it. Um, but at the end of the day, the fact that they got a million installs in that first day, and look, they announced this open beta was coming out, like, I think the week of. So that was a lot of people going for this game i think what they should do take all the feedback they're getting try to polish up on a lot of this the fluidity the finishing everything we just mentioned and release another one take your time there's no rush right in my opinion there's no rush with this like the football gaming community isn't going anywhere uh we want to just see a great product and at the end of the day ufl really has the uh upper hand here with their game because it's free to play so basically they could do another open beta and, you know, they could ask for more changes, then they could finally release. And you know what, if there's still issues, which there's always going to be in video games, right, they can make updates and it's a free game, right? I will say this, first impressions are very, 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 very important, right? Very important. So a first impression to a video game is extremely important. Like, I'll, I'll give you this example. X Define had this problem with the net code, right? When you shot the gun, the bullets weren't always registering. They still had that in the second beta. It was a little better. And they still had it in the full release. It was a little better. And then they, I think, fully almost fixed it now, right? That's okay. Like, there's going to be stuff that's going to be off. So, you know, it's going to take some time. Not everything is an easy fix, but I think definitely the route they should go is just do another beta. Why not, dude? We, let's see how you guys took the feedback, updated the game, you know, whether it's three months, six months. I don't know the timeline. I, I know they've said they want to release this game in 2024, but you guys wanted to release this game in 2023 and you felt it wasn't ready. And look, it wasn't ready. So it's good you didn't release it last year. There's a lot of hype around this game, man. There's a lot of positives. And look, there's a lot of potential here with this being free to play and everything going on. Look, these games, man, you need a lot of investment to get all the licenses, all the teams, all that stuff. Look, if this game does well, man, they're going to have opportunities in the future to update it, add stuff, do even more with the game. I'm really excited, man, because I enjoyed the game with the one mode, the trade system you can see by the stars starting to add in traits, and the grind system to the game. It was really rewarding. Now, obviously, there's no, the transfer market is not like a live transfer market, so that was a little bit different. You know, th that's something that, look, EA is always going to have the upper hand, so they will have to find out a way on this game to do content. But look, like, imagine promos on this game. I don't know what that would look like, but that stuff is really important. Um, content is a huge carry for FC and for FIFA. Um, and, you know, the SBC ability, that type of stuff. So I don't know if it's like upgrade stuff on this game for like certain skins. eFootball never added anything like that. And it's the reason why I think they've just never really done too well outside of all the other overlying issues that that game has. Um, that's going to be a very important thing for this game. Look, I think EA is going away from a transfer market. So I don't think that's a necessity. Although I do think it's a huge vibe on FIFA, that transfer market to go on the market and buy a player. 
Um, but they just have a different system and it's more of a play to earn system. But I do think that SBC part to this game uh, is going to be is going to be important. Uh, at the end of the day, guys, my final thoughts with this game is like I'm very optimistic because I'll tell you two reasons why. The core of the gameplay was fun and the way that they have addressed the community, the way that they are trying to join our scene is nothing but commendable. Um, you know, I feel like UFL has been like someone from above looking out for us in the f f football community. I'm really optimistic, man. I think a lot of people played this game. They wrote it off. It's crap. It's not good, right? What they're re not realizing is that these guys are releasing an unfinished open beta version for us to give them feedback on. And at the end of the day, I had a lot of fun. I thought it was a really fun game with all the broken stuff in it, with all the stuff that needs to be improved, with all the stuff that felt bad. You can't critique UFL, man, the same way you can critique EA, who have been running a game for over 20 years. Yeah, have UFL been probably working on this game for five, six, seven years? Video game development isn't that quick. It's not as quick as you think, right? It's really hard to get this stuff done. So yeah, they have, right? But can you treat them the same way? No, because they haven't even released yet. So that part I didn't really love from our community, but there's always going to be people in our community being super negative no matter what. Um, you know, I'll be real, guys. Like, this is this is my optimism here with this game. I, it really is, dude. I, I, I Like... I want to see these guys succeed. I, I have hated FC on new gen. It's brutal. I simply play it because I love chatting, you know, FIFA and FC with my viewers. And I love doing the menu stuff still. But man, the gameplay, especially since they went to new gen, I mean, FIFA 23 was like somewhat acceptable because the finishing was so good. And But they, they still haven't updated any of this AI new gen drop back. I mean, it's just such a nightmare. I've, I've completely given up with EA because they don't even make patches to try to help us out it's so crazy um so yeah i don't know just overall man like other modes possible in this game co-op ufl take your time obviously that's my that's my main feedback there's other stuff i mean guys i'll probably send over some like more specific stuff but at the end of the day, man, shout out to UFL, the first open football beta really for all of us in the community. And and like, I know my video is a little late here, but I just appreciate it, man. Like just for me and, and my job and my love of, of, of football and just my love of gaming, man. Like I, I'm a guy that like people don't even realize, like I've streamed over 55 games on stream since I started streaming. I just love gaming, dude. So Shout out to these guys, man, for trying to get into the scene. We're, we're going to do all the help we can in the community to help you guys. At least I am, right? I can't speak for everybody. Don't listen to the hate. Let's try to get a good football product, right? Let's try to get this in a better spot. I think that another beta would be a really good idea with the updated changes, right? Because then you can do that. You can get even more feedback. You can see where you're at, and then you can release eventually. There's no need to rush it. No need. Um, those are my main thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what your guys' experience was. I don't know other than that, the lock-on system for improvement, the finishing logic, I think some of the overall fluidity. There's probably other things I mentioned in this game. But overall, man, I, I, like, I was so impressed that they, in this game, not even released, had the greatest tackling system I've ever had and I've ever seen. I, I don't even know. It's crazy like that we don't have tackling like that in other games. Um, but yeah, shout out to them. So thanks for watching today, guys. I appreciate you all. Have a good one, and shout out UFL. We love you. Make us a good football game. Do us great. Thanks for watching.